Okay, so as you can see, class, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to hook up an RGB LED as well as a temperature sensor. We're going to try to get the RGB to tell us something about the temperature. So with our RGB LED, the one we're using, it's a common cathode. So what does common cathode mean as opposed to common anode? Ground. ground. So that means it shares a ground. So I'm going to need to resist this side to ground. So the pin layout that I have here on this RGB may not match the ones in your actual kit. So you need to play around with this. And how I always do it, um, once I figured out which one's the cathode, which in the real LED is going to be the longest leg, okay, in the real RGB LED, I should say, uh, which is opposite of our normal LED. This one tells me that it's, it's green, but if I ever just wanted to check that, I would hook up the green one to power, start my simulation, and even without any code or anything going, it would just confirm it. So that's the step I would do with the real RGB LED, like I mentioned the other day. Take a wire, hook it up to power for each of the legs, and then that way you know which one's which, okay? So I'm gonna hook up my green LED, let's say to pin six. I'll hook up my blue LED to pin five. And then I'll do my red LED to pin four. I'm going to use pink instead of red just to show that it's not a power wire. Okay. And then my temperature sensor, the pinouts are voltage out. So that's the voltage it produces that we're going to read in, in analog pin zero. Okay. And then the right hand side is ground. And then the left hand side is power. Okay. So now I've wired up my two. Now I need to work on the code. So first of all, for the code for circuit 10, which was just the um, temperature sensor, I gave you um, this basic code here. So you can grab all of that and paste that in. So again, remember, whenever I'm pasting it in, I need to get rid of all the other stuff. Um, so let's look through this code really, really quickly first. We have temperature pin that's hooked up to zero. Please note that I can also put A0 here, it would work. Okay, it doesn't necessarily just need to be zero. Okay, you guys having trouble seeing that up there? Can you see it or not? Let me drop it a little bit. Okay, so I can put A0 or zero in there. I always go in the habit of putting A0 because then I know that it has to go to analog zero. If I put zero, I might get confused and accidentally hook it up to a pin that I shouldn't be hooking it up to, okay? So um, once I have that, then I have my serial.begin. Does anyone remember why we need the serial.begin? That's right, it's so that I can print to the serial monitor to see the temperature. So this is the calculation. Um, essentially how this temperature sensor works is it produces a voltage. So this temperature sensor, when I power it up, depending on the temperature, it will produce a different voltage. The voltage range is going to be from zero to five volts. And that's what we're reading into our analog pin because zero would give me zero, five volts would give me 1,023. So that temperature sensor produces some sort of voltage there. In order to do the math to figure out what that voltage converts to be a temperature, um, it's using this get voltage function. So again, somebody created and figured out that that's the factor that I need to multiply it by to get an accurate temperature sensor in degrees Celsius. So whatever the voltage it produces at, at that analog read pin, I multiply it by this factor so that it, it gives me a temperature in Celsius. So that gets produced here, um, and then it converts that into a, a full number rather than a, a percentage. And then I can um, print out that temperature to the serial monitor. So again, if I run this basic code now, notice that my temperature sensor 
When I click on it, I can adjust this and I can also see in my serial monitor that there is a corresponding temperature producing up to two digits of, of accuracy. So again, as I adjust this, you can see that I get a equivalent um, or a detailed temperature in the serial monitor, okay? So now what I want to do is actually use this temperature in degrees Celsius to do something or to show something other than just in the serial monitor. So what I want to do is I want to show a rough temperature with this RGB LED. So the first thing I need to do when I'm doing the RGB LED is I need to set the pins. So I'm going to have uh, a red pin. I'm going to have a green pin. And I'm going to have a blue pin. And because I've already wired these up, I can just look at where I'm having it. I have my red pins, pin four, and I use the right wire colors, which makes it easier to follow. Blue is pin five, and my green is pin six. If I was going to do analog rates to these, I may want to choose, or I need to choose uh, the ones with the squiggly lines. I'm just going to do digital rates, so I'm either going to produce red, green, or blue to give a feedback about the temperature. So in this case, um, those are the pins. I need to set each of those pins to be output, okay? So in other words, I need to set the pin mode. And for each of those, red pin needs to be in or output. And again, I need to repeat that two other times for my other two pins. So then I have this for blue pin. And I have this for green pin. So again, I need to tell the Arduino which pins number. Can anybody tell me why I don't need to set a pin mode for my temperature pin? Yep. Right. These analog inputs only have one choice. The, the pins can't do both direction. They're only doing analog input. So I don't need to tell the Arduino that. Okay. Um, up here, these four, five, and six could be input or output. So I need to tell the Arduino that I'm going to be sending information from that pin. Uh, the Arduino is not going to be listening for a signal. Okay. Um, so again, I just added that to the setup part here. So now I'm ready to write to those pins. So here I'm printing a temperature to the serial monitor, and then I'm waiting a second before I'm producing the next one. So what I want to do, um, I can leave that comment there. So what I want to do now is I want to get the computer to do something different with those RGB LEDs uh, or with that RGB LED color, depending on what the temperature is. So what I'm going to say is if temperature, so I'm using this built-in variable that's already producing something for me, okay? I'm going to say if temperature is greater than 25, so it's greater than 25 degrees Celsius, then what I want to happen is I want to write to my um, RGBs. And when I'm writing to an RGB, I want to write to all three every time because that way if I'm toggling between, I want to make sure that I'm turning pins off in this area and turning certain pins on. And the same thing in all the other uh, decision structures. So I'm going to need to do red pin. In this case, I want it to be red. So if it's above 25 degrees Celsius, I want to show red. So I'm going to set the red pin high. And I also want to do two more digital writes. One for blue pin. And I'm going to set that to low because I only want it to be red. And then I'm going to repeat that again for green pin. Low. So again, by turning just the red pin high, it should, if it's above, it should turn it red. So that takes care of that decision structure. Because I'm gonna have three different choices, I'm gonna have kind of a comfortable range and then I'm gonna have a cold range. 
I'm going to have to do another if statement. This one looks a little bit more complex. I'm going to say else if, I'm going to need two brackets here because I'm going to say if temperature is less than 25, okay? Um, let's say, for example, if it's exactly 25, it's going to fall into that range. If it's uh, less than or equal to 25, so, or sorry, greater than or equal to 25, if it's less than 25, and so this is the Boolean operator and, so both of these things need to be true for it to be green. So I want it to be less than 25 and temperature is greater than, let's say 20, then I want something to happen. So in this statement here, I'm saying the temperature is less than 25 and temperature is also, so both of these need to be true. This ampersand ampersand is like Boolean and. So if this part's true and this part's not true, then it won't do this branch because both of those need to be true for it to go into this branch, okay? So in this case, um, what do I want to happen if I'm in the comfort range? Well, I'm gonna write to all three RGB pins again, but in this case, I want it to be green this is kind of my comfort range. And so I want this to be green. Okay. Um, so I'm going to set red pin low. I'm going to set blue pin low and I'm going to set green pin high. Okay. And if that happens and it falls within that range, then it should make it green. Okay. Finally, in this case, the temperature is either going to be greater than or equal to 25. It's going to fall into my little range there, or it's going to be less than or equal to 20. Okay. Now, because that will be kind of a catch all, I don't even need a third else if statement because there's going to be three choices. It's either going to be greater than or equal to 25. It'll turn red. It'll be within that comfort range. So it's going to turn green. Otherwise, what color do I want it to be to show that it's cold? Blue. So because I can say otherwise, I don't need a second else if, I can just finish with else because else means otherwise. So because it's either gonna fall into this range, this range, or it's gonna be in the other range, meaning it's less than 25, sorry, less than 20, okay? And we can just do the digital right to make it blue. So now I want red low, I want blue high, and I want green low, okay? All right, now my void, I might have got rid of my final curved bracket. So double check your brackets all the time. So for my if, I have an open squiggly bracket, then I have a closed squiggly bracket. I have an open and squiggly bracket for my else if, closed squiggly bracket. Open squiggly bracket for else, closed squiggly bracket for else if. So I still need to close my void loop. So I'm going to have one more show that it's the end of the void loop section. I need to finish that off. Same thing with my other function here. I have an open squiggly bracket, closed squiggly bracket. This other built-in function that someone produced for us just is listed after our loop function. Okay. So again, I have one setup in this combined code. I have one loop and then I have that built-in function that somebody produced for us. Okay, so now I don't need to see the serial monitor anymore. I'm going to start this. You can see that right now I'm set at 25 degrees. So I'm in the comfort zone. If I go above 25 degrees, you can see that I'm at 48 degrees right now. It's showing that it's hot. Okay. Um, if I go down below, if I'm only 9 degrees Celsius, you can see that it's blue. So this gives me a visual output, not an exact temperature, 
but it tells me whether I'm in the comfort zone, too cold or too warm. The other thing I could do is I could flip the blue and the red values um, or the colors and say, okay, if it's below 20, I could say turn it red to show that like a heater's on. Because the reality is, is that if this was a heating and cooling system, like a thermostat, I could use a relay, which we have in our kits, but we're not testing out, to control a 110 volt AC air conditioner, okay? So I could have my decision, and when I turn a red LED on, I can say oh, that actually is turning on a heater to heat up the room. Or if the temperature is too hot, it's above 25, again, if I flip the colors, then I could say, okay, turn on blue to show that I would turn on an air conditioning. Again, same thing, I could use a relay to turn on an actual air conditioning unit. Does that make sense? While this is going as well, if I wanted to add a fan, for example, then I could turn on that DC motor at different levels depending on what the temperature is as well. So I could start playing around with adding that in to my code as well. Any questions? All right.